and welcome to MBS Two Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Oh, the things I've seen! Oh no, what have you seen, my friend? Suicide Squad. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the horror! Oh, the horror! In the name of humanity. <laughs> uh, and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Sorry, Norman. I got my mouth full of full popcorn. I'm I'm ready for this evening. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Suicide Squad, popcorn. You know what that means. What did we watch in 2016? We did it last year, and we're doing it again. Last year was about top five of stuff, but this year is going to be all over the place because we've seen some movies, some good, some bad, some utterly disappointing, some utterly. Went beyond expectations, but anywho, usually we go for first impressions and whatnot. But now we're going right in it because this is what we've seen. And if you haven't watched the movies that we're going to talk about, well, probably we hope that we can sell it to you, make you interested in watching it. So we start off with me going first. So this year I seen an animated movie. A said animated movie is kind of popular. It's in the third series or third running. And said movie is Kung Fu Panda Three. Ah, yes, I saw that too. Yes, what can I say about this movie? This movie was interesting. From the trailers that I saw, it was huh, Poe getting back with his dad, like his real panda dad. And I did not know what to expect. I went in blind. And well, all I have to say that some of the act. Actress and actors that they got for this movie felt wasted. Well, the villain in this was probably the least interesting out of the out of the series.、Mm-hmm. And was the villain played by Brian Cranston? Oh,、uh, I am terrible with actors. I mean, you say a character, and I'll 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 know who you mean. But the actor himself or herself, I I am completely adrift. Yeah, let's see.、Uh... Yeah, that's me too. Yeah, you know what? I ain't getting any. So yeah. Hey, Silvery, do you know who George Carlton is? At least. <laughs> yes, I know who George Carlton is. <laughs>、uh, but but anyway, for this movie, like I mentioned before, they wasted on some of the actors and actresses, like Angelina Jolie. They got her in to play as Tigress, but she doesn't say much in this movie. She did say some things, but. It's not like the first where she played a bigger part. In this one, she's just plays some part. And the synopsis for this movie is that Poe is the great dragon master, and he has to teach his friends or his colleagues how to do kung fu. But he's getting nervous, or he doesn't know how to do so, and he fumbles and he questions himself on how to do things. Uh, well, would you say that's right, Silva? Well, it's it's a quest for his own identity, mostly.、Hmm. Basically, to become the Dragon Warrior, he has to know himself, and it's kind of hard to define yourself very much. And yes, a lot of a lot of characters like Angelina Jolie, Jackie Chan,、mm-hmm. he played the monkey.、Yeah. You would never know it because the monkey hardly says or does anything. Yeah, but technically, I expect that from Jackie Chan. Like, if you talk about his whole. Movie experience or his whole appearance in the movie, I don't expect him to talk. He rarely talks, so that I do understand. But like Angelina Jolie, Seth Rogen, and Lucy Liu,、eh, like I said, wasted potential. But he got an eighty-seven on Rotten Tomatoes, so that's good at least. I'm I'm still disappointed that I actually never got to see this movie. Yet, ironically, I have a. Movie popcorn bucket in my kitchen <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> Probably、um, your brother or parents got it, maybe. Oh no no no! Like what happens is that、uh, at the movie theater every year, if you buy a large bucket of popcorn, you can like later on come back and bring it in,、oh. and you can only buy a whole entire thing of popcorn for four dollars. Oh, that's cool. Only for a year, though. Ah, alrighty then. But anyway,、um, Silver, would you recommend this movie to the general audience? Yes, indeed. I think it's fun. I think that it's a good way to end the Kung Fu Panda series, which means we don't need a Kung Fu Panda four. I realize that 
movie studios are trying to keep things going after they've reached a natural conclusion. Yeah, like Transformers. Yeah. Toy Story. Yeah. Seriously, do we need another Toy Story 2? I don't know. Uh, but as for me, I would say, you know what? Give it a shot. If you've seen 1, 2, um, 3 is the natural conclusion, so give it a shot. Like, it's entertaining at least. And well, like Seppi said, she wanted to see it but couldn't. And I hope our impressions of said movie will impress you to go watch it. Maybe on Netflix or Amazon Prime. I don't know. I guess I'm sort of like only disappointed in the fact that I wasn't able to see this. Mostly because I've had oh so many good memories for the past two movies. I'm sad I didn't get to have a good memory with the third one. Three is the number of movies you shall see. Ah, And three is the number of movies available. Four is too many. And five is right out. (laughs) True. That's what happens to Robocop, remember? One was good. Two was eh. Three was, oh my god, what did you do? It's true. It's true. Uh, But anywho, Silver, what about you? What have you seen this year? Well, let's pull up the old list because, oh, what a time we have had. Well, let's go with something that I don't, I bet most of you haven't seen. Neon Genesis Evangelion 3.0. Oh wow! Uh, I've heard of yeah, it, yeah. but I haven't. Uh, I've I've heard of it, and I've seen the previous movies, but I didn't know that was actually out this year. Yeah, well, it's out on Blu-ray. So if I can make a recommendation, don't watch it. <laughs> oh, I don't have Blu-ray, so okay, I guess I won't watch it. The Neon Genesis series has come under a lot of fire. I mean, when I first saw it, and I was like a high school kid, way back in the dinosaur age. <laughs> It was stunning to see. I still remember the thrill of watching the the main robot, Ava Unit 1, go berserk for the first time. And just the music, the sound. But people have come down on it for a bunch of religious sim, uh, symbolism that seems to have no genuine meaning. Uh, trying to get very heavy-handed in its uh, presentation. Mm-hmm. So when they started doing these movies, which were simultaneously abridging the series but also changing stuff, it's like, okay, this could work well. My gosh, the third movie chucks everything from the series out the window and starts a brand new tale where suddenly everyone is a jerk. To Shinji or to everyone? To everyone. Uh. Especially Shinji. <laughs> I mean, here's Get in a- the robot, Shinji! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is... It's kind of true. This is the... Here are these people that are always bossing him around. And then they're saying, oh, you're so selfish. Well, what about you jerks? <laughs> you're the ones throwing him into these traumatic experiences to do what you need. And you want him to be happy about it. Well, guess what? No sane human being would be happy in this situation. Hmm. True that. No one would be eager. And then this movie, I have no idea when when 4.0 will come out. But the ending is just... So disappointing. Would you say that the ending or this ending for 3.3, right? Yeah, I can't, I can't remember if they're still doing the silly numbering. Yes, yeah, probably 3.3. Yeah, well, would you say that this ending is much worse than the original one where Shinji's VA, the American VA, talk? <laughs> Just talk about it? In all honesty, I can't even make sense of which ending Evangelion has anymore. <laughs> but I do know that they say... Just looking online, it's, they say that 2017 will hold the final movie in August, which... Eh? So, what is this, actually? Like, is this a retelling or a, a bridge for the entire series? Oh, no, if it was a bridge, I'd want little Karibo to do it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I'll say it's it's a retelling, but it seems to be almost saying it's an alternate timeline or a redo of the universe. It is its own thing, but sometimes being your own thing is not as rewarding as it could be. Mm. And would you recommend this one? No. So, total pass, even if you're an Ava fan. If you're an Ava fan, I suppose you've already seen it, but I found it very disappointing, and so I would not recommend it even to a fellow fans. Uh, but do they at least play the theme song? Uh, no. Ah, oh, man. The Ava theme song is the best. There's barely any Avas in it. Really now? Oh, that's the hard part. Wow. An Ava movie without Avas. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. But anywho, we move on to our next person. Seppi, what have you watched this year? Well, I do have a few movies, but if 
Silver, I've heard good things about this movie. Go see your name. I, I can't see my name. It's on my Twitter. No, it's an anime about like this. Um, oh, that one. I've heard good things about it. I haven't actually seen it myself because, you know, it's kind of in Japan. Mm-hmm. That or I haven't had access to it. It's basically about a bully trying to redeem a friendship or something with a girl who is deaf. Say Anyways. what? <laughs> deaf. You know, like, can't what? hear. What? I know what you're doing. Anyways. Huh? But a movie I actually have seen that I do recommend going to see is... The Nice Guys. Has anybody seen that? Um, Oh, yes. I've heard of it. Okay, basically, this is what my grandmother, of all people, took me to see rather than going to see Alice in Wonderland 2. Oh, my. Which I'm thankful for. Basically, it takes place in the 1970s. It's also a buddy cop movie between a hitman and, well, a struggling cop who's... I forget, what was his position? Detective... Yeah, freelance detective. Free or freelance detective who's also taking care of a daughter who might be more competent than he is. Well, best child actress and child character of the whole year. I know. Well, actually. I, I was afraid that I was going to hate her, but it's like, I like this kid. She's like, she yeah. amuses me. She might, actually, she might be up there with Kubo. Ty, hard to, hard to say. Ah, yeah, Kubo. Kubo's cool. Well, live action, this kid was wonderful. Oh, my goodness. And let's just say it may be a little explicit for a younger audience. Mostly because it kind of takes in, takes place in the porn capital of the world. Which one? The one in America. Ellie? Eh, yeah, in the 1970s. Uh, all right. It's, it's a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Your input on it, Silver? Yes. Well, let's see. I mean, you have this guy who's sort of a strong man, and he's he wants to be a good guy, but he seems to only be capable of violence. And you have a loser detective, and this little girl who is like the golden thread, she brings out the best in them. One, by believing in him when he doesn't believe in himself. One, calling the other guy... That's not a word! (laughs) Wow, CD was going to say something about that. The mystery itself is sort of all winding around i mean it's never it's not clear cut i don't know how much of it is really successful but mostly it's just guys who are in a bad world they're not nice people but you can still do good things sometimes that's realistic but optimistic at the same time so would you say that good movie should watch oh my second favorite of the year oh really no oh yeah definitely go see it it was my favorite for a while, like, when I actually got to see it. it <laughs> I don't know. It flew under the radar for me. I hadn't seen any trailers, and then suddenly I'm taking... I've been taken to this unknown movie by my grandmother, of all people. My goodness. Nice job, Granny. <laughs> uh. And I don't know. I I absolutely love it. The humor is fantastic, and... Go see it. All right. If you're of age, anyway. I I don't think anyone under 18 should go see this, though. Uh, I'll try and catch it if I can. Now you've got me envisioning your grandma asking you to go, Hey there, Safi, would you let me go see some Earth movies with me? What? Oh, let's let's go watch the nice guys. They're going to beat the crap out of some guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right, then. Well, my grandmother actually was in the military at one point, so... <laughs> okay. Oh, I should th- I should throw in more cursing, then. Oh, God, no, please don't. Uh, but anywho, talking about beating <laughs> up bad guys, uh, on my end of the scale, I've watched Batman, Bad Blood, out on the Blu-rays and DVDs. This is a DC direct to video animated movie and long story short batman's missing um dick grayson nightwing has to take or has to put on the mantle of batman while searching for batman bruce wayne batman and this is in continuity with the whole uh, damian wayne being there um i think if you've seen that line of movies you would be interested in watching this one by the way silver have you seen this one Yes, I have. In fact, thank you for saying that because I'd forgotten that came out. But it was 
I thought it was very, very good. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it's a story of what happens if Batman's not here. So, well, you have the entire crew um, banding up together and just try to do stuff, like try to get things done and stuff. Um, I think this is the first appearance of Batwoman and also... Is that Steel? I don't remember him. Or oh, Cyborg. Uh, no, it's a, a Batwing, I think. Batwing. Yes, uh, Cyborg is with the Justice League. Yeah, yeah, Batwing. Like, is he canon? I don't remember him at all. He was, he at least was a part of the new 52, the, uh... the new onslaught of characters. I'm not sure if they kept him or if they killed him. They, that seems to be how things go in comics. Yeah. Sorry, your sales aren't great. We're gonna, like, kill ya. What? But don't worry, it's only for a week. Oh no. Yeah. But still, um, unfortunately for you diehard Batman fans there, uh, this is not Kevin Conroy, the legendary Batman voice who does all the uh, Batman animated series and Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. This is Jason O'Mara. Um, I think he does a good voice. So yeah, give it a shot. Him, Silver? Well, I just thought of the, uh, how it should have ended. Th- Kind of theme song to it. Oh, God. Because maybe now we got bad blood. <laughs> you know, it used to be best buds. <laughs> so take a look at what you become. Because maybe now we got bad blood. <laughs> hey! Oh, boy. I'm I'm scared over the fact that you actually know this song. Are you kidding? I listened to that song several times, and I found it hilarious. All my friends gave me crazy looks. <laughs> yeah. Just made the experience all the richer. <laughs> yeah. But, anywho, I, I say that if you're a Batman fan, Maddie, I'm talking to you, you should watch this one. Because it's fun. It's fun. Because um, the Batman animated or the DC animated series are much better than the live actions. That I can uh, promise you that. So I say go watch it if you get the chance. And Silver? Uh, you mentioned the live actions. So, uh, 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 uh. Yes. By the way, I must make a correction. I was thinking of the wrong movie when I mentioned your name. Uh-oh. I, I looked up the trailer to show Silver, but it's like, wait, this isn't the movie I'm thinking of. Oh, crap. It's not the movie you deserve, but it's the movie you need. No, it's, um... Oh, so it's what you need, but don't deserve. <laughs> no. Uh... I, I was thinking of a different movie when I said your name instead of a, uh... So it's the movie that... You... That you, uh, deserve to need, but don't need to deserve. There we go. <laughs> what? Oh, but anywho, Silver, would you recommend Bad Blood? <laughs> yes, very much. So, it's out on the Blu-rays and DVD, so go watch it. I think you can rent it out on Redbox, probably. There you go. And Silver, what about you, my friend? A silent voice, that's what it's called. Alrighty then. Sorry! Well, let, let's let's shift. If we're if we're talking DC movies, then we'll also talk about X Men Apocalypse. Da, 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 da. I watched that one. <laughs> uh. You are all my children, <laughs> but I'm not paying alimony. <laughs> yeah, X Men Apocalypse. This one was uh, it was a thing. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it felt like it felt kind of unfocused. I mean, here you are, you're trying to think that, uh, Apocalypse is this great threat. And by and large, with all his funny voices and just walking around, he doesn't have that physical intimidation. Especially when he, like, oh yeah, I can totally turn you all to sand. I just don't feel like it. And, uh, of course, Magneto, actually Magneto's the one I feel the most sorry for. Cause there's that, there's that scene with his, with his family. And it's like, ah! But then he goes, I hate everybody. No, wait, I love everybody. No, wait, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I think the whole audience is. I won't be an old man, Logan, or will I? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, so, well, on my end, I watched this. How do I put this? I watched a few of the X-Men movies from the very beginning, the whole one, two, three. Um, I hated three and I didn't appreciate two. One was a cult classic because it was the very beginning. Then we jump into the newer ones with uh, X-Men First Class, was it? Uh, yeah. I haven't watched that one. And then jump straight into X-Men Days of Future Past, which I love because it was really entertaining. I do like it. And then Apocalypse. I didn't know what to think about it. It was... How do I put this? As a part conflict, 
I find it entertaining. It had its moments, especially with Quicksilver. All the Quicksilver moments were fun. The music was awesome. Like, what can I say? Like, it was just good for the overall movie. It was, eh. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, eh. It's fun, but it's non-memorable. Oh, but I do remember one thing. There was a scene involving Magneto taking his revenge on the workers at the factory he worked at. He was about to kill everyone until Apocalypse came in and killed everyone in there. I laugh out loud while the whole theater was silent. <laughs> I just find that really, really disturbing and funny at the same time. It's like Magneto's like, hey, I was going to do that. Well, why did you? <laughs> no, he, I, the, the whole setup was like he was going to kill everyone. And then like the mutant came in. Don't you try and stop me. Like Apocalypse just say, okay. Everybody dead. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> he took it from Magneto. Like, I just find it funny, yet everybody in the audience didn't. <laughs> well, you know, you just, you just witnessed at least a dozen guys die in an in instant, and, you know, you're, you're giggling. Are you the Joker by chance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There's th- th- something for later. Uh, but still, uh, I-, I say pass on this one. Uh, I say it's it's a fun flick, but it's not anything truly memorable. Mm, yeah, that's the thing. And I will say that the the new X Men, which were the old X Men, they didn't really steal the show. Aside from, like you say, Quicksilver, Sweet Dream scene. Yeah, that was cool. That was just memorable. I think it's out on the YouTube. So you can just go watch that. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I say it's a past Silver says like if you have the time, watch it. Yes. Yeah, if the opportunity presents itself, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yeah. Or at least not entertained. Yeah, yeah I, I think you'll be entertained, but eh, just don't hold it to a high regard. Um, Rotten Tomato says it's forty-eight, so that's something. Russell Crowe be all like, "Are you not entertained?" But <laughs> uh, Seppi, you didn't talk about anything, so I'm assuming you haven't watched X Men Apocalypse. Nope. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you watch? Well, I watched Deadpool, <laughs> ah. not at the release day in the theaters, but I watched it at BronyCon with Toon Critic, uh, a few, uh, Toon Critic, uh, Manga Common, a couple other friends, Kitty and Rustic, and also Kichi and FNGR, because we were all in the same room watching it. <laughs> Alrighty, the Deadpool, I watched it too. Silva? As did I. I, I don't know why. I was not, I was expecting it to be a fun fourth wall breaking, uh, action flick, but now I know why it came out on Valentine's Day of all reason. Although I didn't get to have a very romantic, um, you know, cuddle puddle <laughs> with, uh, Common like I wanted to. Then again, we had just gotten together, so I don't blame him. <laughs> uh, but what, well, since this is your pick, so do describe to us, like, what do you like and so on? I don't think I had any sort of moment that I didn't like. Deadpool, it was a fun movie. It was unexpected. I had wanted to see it because everybody had been telling me good things about it. I was so glad I did end up watching it. It wasn't overhyped. And the character Deadpool, played by um Ryan Reynolds... I, I don't know why. I really love his interpretation of Deadpool. It's... According to every other source of review I've seen, there was apparently Deadpool where he was, uh, had his mouth completely sewn shut. <laughs> we do not talk about that one. Either way, the point is, I'm glad he actually can talk in this because he's way more entertaining. I, I don't know what it was about. It. I, I like the romance, like, between Deadpool and the uh, one woman I forgot the name of. <laughs> uh, let's see. The woman is called the one Vanessa. That he gave the ring pop to Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa. I liked her. She was cool, even though she became a strip club just because she didn't have no man in her life. Then again, I blame her. It's cruel, man. By the way, um, this movie is an R-rated movie, and it's the first R-rated comic book movie. To be released in theaters, and it's the most successful one. So, wow. Okay, congratulations, congratulations on that. All I'm yeah. gonna say is that 
You're the meaning in my life. You're the inspiration. I'm going to stop. Okay. And Silva, what did you think about said movie? As a brony, I will appreciate this movie's contribution. For when Spitfire does the superhero ending, everyone quoted this scene in Deadpool ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah. It's murder on the knees. <laughs> but it's it's fun start to finish. And yes, I appreciate that Deadpool said more than just <clears throat> shh in a movie. Yeah. Uh, just hilarious all around. And plenty of fourth wall jokes. Yep. And also the way they animate his eyes. I think he was the forerunner for, for Spider-Man. Yeah, that that was cool with how he did the mask. And of course, super what is it? Super Meghead teenage war somebody. Oh, hit I think. That's like also oh. one of my favorite parts was his motivation for all of this. <laughs> it wasn't the classic noble I need to be hero because hero thing and whatnot. No, I just want to be hot again. <laughs> <laughs> also, Rico's hands. You know, I need a little time. This thing is going to feel like Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> uh, oh, well. You could do an R-rated movie and uh, be profitable. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's like they have a good story behind it, and the story needed to be rated R, so that's why they did it. It's not like slap on there just to have it for the R and shock value. They had a reason to. And as for me, this movie, I have a deep fear where, you know how Deadpool can be with his fort wall breaking, right? Sometimes he can get really tiresome, you, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah, surprisingly, in this movie, you don't get that. You don't get that overabundance of fort wall breaking that makes you feel, oh, stop it already. It's all there, it's perfect, it's the right amount of fort wall breaking. And with... This movie, uh, wow, the jokes in here were priceless with um, Professor X and how Deadpool mentioned that, oh wow, um, he's at the Xavier School for Gifted Children, but surprisingly there's only two of you here, um, Colossus and uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. It's like the studio can't get uh, more money to get more, <laughs> it's like... Those kind of jokes really get me. Like, wow, so perfect. And watching this in theaters and stuff, fun. A really fun movie. Um, <clears throat> I personally say go watch it if you can. It's out on Blu-ray and DVD. And yeah, it's fun. Uh, if you're of age, I say go ahead and watch it. Silva? Yes, if you're... Oh, give me a break. You're all going to see it no matter what. Age restrictions, age restrictions. But yes, it's fun. It's it's a great movie. One of Marvel's better entries. And yes, the, the sheer humor, violence, and irreverence is just wonderful. I think it's Fox. Also, go see it if you have a really nerdy girlfriend who really loves Marvel movies as well. She'd appreciate this. Uh, and, well, my next movie on the list would be Zootopia. Or Zootropolis for you Europeans. Ah, yes. This movie is good. It's just too well, good. It's not good. It's amazing. It's fantabulous. Yep. And it ranks high on Rotten Tomatoes with a 98%. So what can I say? This movie was just a breath of fresh air. And this, by the way, this is not um, Pixar. This is Disney Studios. So... <coughs> Their animation with this one, the stories, the characterization of the characters, it's just good. I, I don't know what to say. It's like, this movie came out this year, and the amount of fan work for this one has gone out the window. It's like this movie came out last year, and most of the work has been collecting from last year. But nope, it's this year, March 4th, 2016. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have high expectations, but... After watching this, I am happy that I did watch it. I went out by the Blu-ray, I went out and buy the art book and other things, and I'm happy with this purchase, and I am happy with this movie. Uh, you could say that I'm a fan. Yay. Uh, story is nothing new. It's just believe in yourself and kind of story. But I think you just should go watch it. Uh, Sappy, you said you watched it, right? I saw it. I saw it in theaters. I I actually remember 
getting so invested that I got sick from one and a half large popcorns. How? How did you get sick? I I was so invested in the movie that I kept like eating as I was watching the movie, like without realizing it, and then I just got really sick in the uh, end of the movie. Oh. Uh, what, did, what did you think about the movie overall? Oh my gosh, it's way too amazing. <laughs> uh, Silver's quiet for now. Like, did you watch this one, Silver? I am screaming internally. <laughs> uh, In fact, my, my, my fanboy is an ultrasonic tone that only dogs can hear. No wonder my neighbor dog's barking. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's right. Dogs all over the world are like, hey, he likes it, he likes it, he likes it. Bone, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah, then there's my dog who's just asleep over there. But your dog's deaf, right? So it can't be that loud. Well, if the dog's deaf, I can't really help that. I love this movie. I, it's it's top three, to be sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, ni- nice Guys might beat it out just a little bit because it, Nice Guys was more gritty. But It was more tra- manly. <laughs> more manly. But yes, the story about a little bunny is just so cute. Yes, I'm manly. <laughs> <laughs> Sure you are, uh, Silver. Sure you are. People can can use this to sort of identify their own struggles, the prejudices they face it based on race, gender, sexual identity, you name it. Uh there is no basically it's a movie that it can be inclusive for all. Which is very, very nice. And well, come on. How many times can I work try anything into a joke? <laughs> True that. Well, it's better than frozen. Oh, so Norman, you just gotta let that go. <laughs> uh, no comment. Especially when Zootopia itself references let it go. I know! The reference is like Pig Hero 6. <laughs> oh yeah, and they have to, uh, and they friggin' reference Mo- Moana with a Meowna <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but still, uh, this movie, I, I love this movie. It's, I if I had to put a rating, uh, this is high up. I, I don't know how, number what, but it's high up. I say go watch it. Go no, buy the Blu-ray and DVD set. Go buy it now. What about you two? Oh yes, definitely. Go buy the Blu-ray, then go buy a theater, <laughs> then play the Blu-ray in the theater with surround sound. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so what's what's your other pick? Well, let's see here. Uh, guess I'm, guess I'm infatuated, infatuated with the East because I will talk about Shin Godzilla. Oh, I wish I saw that, but I didn't get a chance. When I first heard about the movie, I thought, well, wow, are they really under budget constraints? Why are they only showing us his Shin? <laughs> but no, this is, this is Shin mm-hmm. isn't true, which is a rather bold claim, given that I thought the American Godzilla was pretty good. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I thought you were talking about the 97 one, sorry. No. I said the American Godzilla, not the Godzilla yeah. wannabe. <laughs> you say American, so it popped... Yeah, yeah, okay, good, okay, good, okay, okay. good. There's ups and downs to it. Upside, it's an interesting take in that we see things handled from the Japanese government and the crippling litigation and procedure that that basically hinders any kind of response. This was, in many ways, a criticism of Japan's uh handling of, I believe it was an earthquake, and the disaster relief shortly thereafter. Uh, there are some shots in the movie that make no sense to me. I feel like if I were part of the Japanese culture, it might make more sense. But as someone on the outside looking in, it didn't reach me, but I still found it fascinating. Godzilla himself, now rendered fully in, in CG, when you first see the Godzilla, he's a very different look. You're like, what is that? What have you done? But as it evolves, the movie, uh, it, Godzilla looks better, more menacing, and the final shot of the movie is just chilling. Uh, I will not say more than that, though hopefully people will laugh at the double <laughs> meaning. Right, you know. So, I don't know when it will be out on DVD or Blu-ray, Blu-ray but I would recommend All right. it. If you want to know more insight on what Silver mentioned about the whole uh, Japanese politics and whatnot, I would recommend you go watch Gaijin Goomba's take on it because he lives in Japan, so he's an outsider looking into it. So he gets a general idea of what's going on. So um, listen to what he has to say because 
he's American and he lives in Japan. So, well, like I said, uh, insiders. Well, he doesn't live in Japan currently, but he lived in yeah, Japan. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. But anywho, um, Sebi, what's your next movie? I I feel like I don't know. Should I put this recent release? Has anyone here seen Moana? Oh, I wish I did, yes. but I just had a chance. Oh well, we're gonna sell it oh, to no, you. I, anyway. I want to, but <laughs> this movie definitely hit it for me with the music. Completely awed me with the performance of Dwayne the Rock Johnson and. The music is just beautiful and fascinating, and I like the story. <laughs> so Moana, you want, the only you want, problem I really had with this movie was it's it's a little slow on the start, but once you get it going, it's just a fantastic run. And oh my gosh, the I forget his name. I I know the last part, Miranda. The guy who basically did, like, the Hamilton musical basically wrote some of the songs for this, and when you hear his voice in, um, like, we know the way, oh, yes. So you just want to thank them, and they'll say, you're welcome? <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome? Uh, Silver, what's your take on this? Moana might be the best example of a true princess archetype in a long time. <laughs> I mean, there, uh, the funny thing is that the, this movie tries to use the princess as an insult. But, surprise, surprise, this is the most emotionally healthy, proactive princess. I know Disney will try to adopt her into their toy line, but it it's works on a whole different level. I will say that in trying to ma- have Moana be strong, there were times where they overdid it where suddenly this demigod warrior is just, you could almost skip him at times and he wouldn't be, the story would not suffer. And yet at the same time, there are some really awesome scenes for him, so it's not all one-sided. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love the music. I had both It Calls Me and You're Welcome stuck in my head for 48 hours. Oh, wow. I think You're Welcome is definitely one of my favorite songs, too. I heard good things from another yes. YouTuber slash podcaster. So, yeah, I have high hopes for this. Like, if I do get to watch it, I have high hopes. We've got high hopes. I'd recommend it to everyone. Give it a watch. Don't worry about... Well, don't worry about any trying to understand the culture. They do a good job of representing it. There is one thing I don't know, and I'd love to find this out. In the movie, the, Moana is, because she's the chief's daughter, she will become chief herself mm-hmm. directly. There's no, oh, you have to marry a warrior so he could be chief or anything like that. It's like, hmm, could it be that some cultures got it right in the first go? Maybe. I don't know. Although there is one bit of controversy when it comes to a uh, surrounding character. For some reason, people think that Maui is overweight. What? Dude, that dude is a mount. If he's overweight, it's from pure muscle. Yeah. The dude mm-hmm. is a pure mountain of yeah. muscle. Apparently, there's a lot of controversy because people think that um, Maui is overweight, which is apparently a Polynesian stereotype. Then I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at, you know, people who I know of a similar body type, and I know they're strong as hell. <laughs> well... And plus, now he can lift a boat with one hand with ease. Yeah. Let's just say that those people don't know what they're talking about. E. Well, I just, I just look at Maui and he, that is not, that is muscle. Yeah. Not I mean, at all. Basically, he's just got a big canvas to, for his, for his tattoo to have some yeah, rolling yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh. That moment when the best mo- character in the movie is a tattoo. <laughs> uh. All right, so you both say go watch it then, all right? Oh, yes. All right. Yes, yes, yes. And next movie for me is we're going to Japan. We're going to watch an anime movie. And said movie is called Bakemono no Ko. Or direct translation is The Boy and the Beast. This is one of those movies where don't know what to expect. But if you see the trailers, it's fun and interesting. Basically, it's, it's a story about finding oneself. Kyota, the main lead for this movie, is a boy of nine and he runs away from home because he doesn't like his 
parents or his mother's side of the family because they're rich, snobby people. So he runs away to Shibuya and finds this gateway to what you might call this the world of the beasts. And said world is kind of full of animals and he's the only human. So just imagine said world is full of furries. <laughs> For lack of a better word, yes. Uh, eh. Now, now I have a question. Yes. Was this done by the same animation company that did Summer Wars? Yes. Okay, I think I know what this movie is, son. I, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a really good one. I, I would recommend go watching it because it's heart-touching. Kyota here just wants to belong. So he takes apprenticeship with this one bear who is in line to become the leader of the whole clan, but he has to fight a boar. You know, it's one of those stories where those two need to fight. Uh, I, I'm not doing it justice by me trying to explain away the story, but I say go watch it. It's really fun and entertaining. Um, Silver, have you watched this one? Nope, this is the first I've heard of it. Yeah. I say go watch it. Like, it's a really entertaining one. Like, I su- I'm surprised that it's out this year. I would have thought that this was last year's thing. But yeah, go watch it if you can. Um, probably on the Blu-ray DVDs or the online site, like Netflix or whatever. Um, Silver, what's your next pick? Da na 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 na. Na 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 na. Da na 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 na. Controversy! strings. Oh god. Well, that was my favorite of the year, but this one, this was the one where it just basically had to prove it wasn't bad. I don't think any movie has suffered as much bad press going in as this movie. Yeah, I've heard a lot. Ghostbusters. Oh, goodness. So basically, it was meh. It was just there. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was just present. And the humor did not connect for me. Uh... The the conflict did not really grab me. The character arcs were their character arcs. There seemed to be characters saying stuff, but not a lot really happened. And that's disappointing. I feel like this uh, this movie, it tried to pitch itself as, we have an all-female cast, we're progressive, you have to like us. I was like, no guys, real progress is ha- showing you can have great characters where gender does not matter. Just ask the question, are these good characters? And more often than not, no, they are not good characters because I don't care for most of the film. There were funny moments. There were fantastically funny moments. Usually like uh, Dan Aykroyd uh, being the cab driver. Mm-hmm. But by and large, I just like, no, this came and went and all it left was a bitter controversy on the net. But on the plus side, I did it did prompt the release of the Real Ghostbusters cartoon to come out on DVD, which is sitting on my shelf next to me. How many seasons of that one? <laughs> five. Oh, wow. The full set? Well, actually, I should say there are five volumes. Oh. Uh, yes. All right. So- oh, also, I got Ghostbusters 1 and 2. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Do you also have a case of uh, Ecto Cooler next to you, Silver? <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to be good. <laughs> That's the great unifier online. Yeah, but by the way, Silver, um, if you want to continue the story of the original Ghostbusters series, try and find the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3 game of the set name, Ghostbusters, because uh, the writers for the movie wrote the game or wrote the story for the game too. It's a direct continuation for part one and two. Yes, I, I've heard of it, I think. I might at this point it might be easier just to catch it on YouTube. Yeah, probably the YouTubes. Uh, so, would you say pass on this one? Mm, I think if it if a group of friends want to watch it, you won't have to suffer through. But at the same time, there's no motivation to see it yourself. Mm. Don't go out of your way for it. Let it come to you. <laughs> All righty then, Seppi. What about you? Finding Dory was okay. Yay! Oh, don't tell that to Josh Scorcher. He was tearing up at the beginning. He's, <laughs> I, I think he, I think he went for it a lot more than anyone. Yes, I remember us torturing him during your panel on Sunday, Silver. Oh yes. Uh, also, I need to point out, um, same time, Piper, 
the little bird that came, well, that showed before oh, this that one. Was, that was so oh adorable. Oh my gosh. I know. It, it was so fluffy and <laughs> I want to hug it. I know. Until, until it got hit by that wave and then you're like, oh <laughs> my god, you scarred the child. <laughs> but he's so cute. Like, the way that he worked at it, like, ah, oh, but that's a different story. That's a different story. So, everybody watched it. Everybody watched it. Everybody watched it, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it, it is a sequel that arguably Finding Nemo did not need. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was still a lot of fun. And for me, um, when I watched this, I didn't really have the full intention of going to watch it. But since my sister and her two kids and her husband and my parents wanted to go watch it, I was dragged along. And this is one of those situations where... It came out like what ten years now since the first Finding Nemo was it? It's been a good chunk of time. Yeah. So this was kind of like you know what this is family movie. Let's go and watch it. My nephew enjoyed the movie. He bought the toys like um, one of those you know Finding Dory toys. You know it's out there. But yeah. From my point of view, or from my end here, it's fun. It's a really fun movie for the whole family to watch. The story beat follows similar to Finding Nemo, but this had its twists and turns. Safi, what you did you like the Finding Dory? I I did like the Finding Dory. It was a it was a good movie. I'm I honestly don't remember much of it, but my favorite part about the parents was how even though their child had a um was struggling with this, I don't want to say disorder. It's a disorder. I'm not sure how to describe it. It is a disorder. Hmm? Like, don't, don't beat okay, around the bush. Then. It is a disorder. Okay, then. Basically, I love how they were able to support and they still loved their daughter, even though she was struggling with this short-term memory loss. And I don't know. I, I really like the parents. I really like how the story led up to this. And I... I don't know. I love the internal conflict that Dory is like facing throughout this whole entire movie and how much she had to succumb in order to get past it. There's not really much I can say on the matter other than that. Also, I, the octopus man. Best I character. like seashells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the, the octopus. Oh, yes, and baby Dory was adorable. <laughs> yeah. And the octopus itself, he was the cynic. He was the guy that, I don't care. I just want to live in the aquarium because I get pampered. But Dory's like, nah, you need to be free. No, no, no. no. He was trying to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Oh, right. I forgot. Yeah, but... They they were trying to, like, let him go free or something. Yeah, but, yeah, th- 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 this story is fun. By the way, um, I- I'm not sure how this relates back to ponies, but do you remember Becky? The bird? Oh, yes, the crazy cross-eyed one. Yeah. Played by Black Griffin. Huh. Kill Wait. me. Didn't it just say, Wah? Yep. <laughs> so Black Griffin just went, Wah? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he, no, I need to look this up. Did he Did he ask what his motivation was in the scene? I didn't ask. Like, I should ask, but no, I didn't. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Silva, what about you, man? What do you think about this one? Like, I think I said my piece, Sappy said hers, and what about you? Oh, well, like I say, it's the it's the sequel it didn't necessarily need, but it was still fun, enjoyable, some very funny moments. And in a way, and yes, you do, you do tend to tear up mm. when you see baby Dory and older Dory trying just to figure out their way with this memory loss. Mm. Yeah, th- that was heart-touching, and the ending was... Uh, the, the, when she meet the family, that was like, oh. And of course, Nemo and and his dad. Yeah, it's funny how I can never remember the dad's name. Marlin. Marlin. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, Black Griffin did play Becky. Yep. See, I ain't lying. Uh, so overall, I say go watch it. It's a fun movie. You won't. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Excellent. And Sabi, you? Huh? This movie. Go watch or pass. I thought it was obvious you need to go watch it. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, talking about movies that you should pass, uh, my pick would be Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Oh, I hit the snooze button on the Dawn of Justice. Yep. 
<sighs> you know, I, uh, I am a very positive guy. Like, I go into things having a blank canvas saying, surprise me, entertain me, not taking whatever people say to heart. But this one, ay ay ay. This is the movie where stop, listen to what the guy had to say, and think. But nope, this is the movie where, let's just say that I'm, I have high expectations for Lego Batman. Don't go watch this one. Like, no, there's no point. No, no, you know what? Don't watch it at all costs. Silver, I know you watched it, so what do you think? <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. So, basically, ev- you know, everyone talks about clashing ideals when Batman and Superman mm-hmm. fight. And I think that's wrong. Because, really, clashing ideals are not a fist fight. That implies that if one side wins, the ideal, uh, that ideal is stronger or more correct. And I don't believe that. Uh Really, it's when they work towards a similar, a shared problem with, through different means. And they didn't do that, this, this, uh, movie. They just got mad at each other. Batman killed a lot of people. Superman had the Christ complex, but that's about it. I mean, he had a Christ complex going the whole time. How else to describe this? Lex Luthor Jr., they tried to wheel back on that. One fellow, the Brony Chef, talked to me about how early Lex Luthor, like during the Silver Age, Mm -hmm. he was that eccentric madman. So this could be seen as a tribute to all forms of Lex Luthor. But more recently, Lex has solidified as this cunning tactical genius. Having him be this bonkers kid who really is just the Joker Lex Luthor, not really working. I will say there was one scene where I really fell for Superman. It, uh... He's standing in the burning rubble after the a bomb has gone off. And just this look of, what do I do? I don't know what to do from here. But here's the thing where I... Who, let's just say this. We're talking about Superman here. He hears stuff. He His reaction speed is superhuman. So if he noticed that explosion, he, he could just move really, really fast and... Uh, you know what I mean here? You, you... Oh, I'm picking up. I, I, I do love the how it should have ended take where he just like, oh, dang, flies around the earth so he <laughs> back in time. Yeah. This man has a bomb. I win. <laughs> yeah, see? Oh, God. Oh. But again, this did prompt the Bat Blood uh, parody <laughs> video, which I, I do so enjoy. Yeah. But, okay, Seppi, have you watched this? Nope. Good. Don't. Oh, Silver, what do you think? Like, should Sappy watch this or not? No, Sappy, spare yourself. Get away, my child. Run. Be free. Yep. Okay. Uh, what? Well. Silver, Silver, you do care enough about me to make me avoid movies that are terrible. Go watch Indiana Jones instead. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, watch it now. Okay, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't trust George Lucas. I'm sorry, Silver. No, one, two, and one, the first one's good. Not sure about the yeah, two and three. What one one and three are one and three are really good. It's like Star Trek. The even movies are skippable. But silver next on your list. Okay, there are so many movies to go through, but let's talk about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Ah, haven't watched that. Wanted to, but haven't. Mm. I wanted to see it. I hear so many good things about it, but I just didn't have time because college. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, well. Mm. I have to offer a, a, an odd perspective on this. See, my friends have said, oh, you just weren't as into it because you were under a lot of stress. This, We went to go see this movie after my dad had gone to the ER and my mom had just had knee surgery. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't exactly in the cheeriest of moods. Here's the thing. There's a lot to like about this movie. When they really put the focus on the Fantastic Beasts, it's beautiful and and sweeping and you're just so thrilled by it. Unfortunately, a lot of the movie is just spent running around New York going after these little, little animals. And it's kind of funny. There is a, there is a ratio. The bigger the beast, the more fantastic it is. That's good. Make it big. I think what, what works against it the most is the main character who is, when you first meet him, he's not very sympathetic. He's basically putting a bunch of people in danger 
just because of his obsession. The real guy you you empathize with, you cheer for as an underdog, is the muggle uh, who who gets swap, swept up in this. Also, America's more bo- boring. They call we call them non mages mm-hmm. as opposed to muggles. And it's like ah, <laughs> oh yeah, really? The, that is boring. What the hell, the, America? And the the wizards in America are all jerks, <laughs> all boring. There's no there's not a lot of wonder to this. Until you get out of America, which I thought, hmm, is J.K. trying to make a statement with this? Or is this just fine British patriotism? I don't know, but I in, didn't get... In my opinion, I just think that uh, J.K. Rowling just can't write for uh, Americans. Probably not. After all, we're loud and obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> and proud of it. Hey, dog! <laughs> also, before- also, before January rolls around, I'll just say, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 uh, It's okay. We forgive you. Oh, at least I forgive it's you. Real. No, it's it's not it's, okay. It's not okay at all. <laughs> uh, uh, but what can I say? I probably will give it another watch somewhere down the line to see if, I, if I'm in a lighter mood. Maybe I'll get more swept up in it. Mm. I'd caution it's it's definitely not on par with Harry Potter. Uh, all right. It's just not. But it can be fun and beautiful in its own way. So I'd give, I'd recommend it on Blu-ray. I don't know if I'll have a more positive view on a second viewing. Mm, all right. I, 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 for one, am excited to watch this one because didn't have the chance because theaters were, you know, how movies are. Two weeks later, movies dead. Mm. So when it comes out on the DVD or Blu-ray, I'll probably catch it. So. Well, so- Sounds good. So anyway, we have gone long now. I mean, I would like to talk more about it. We can go for a two-hour podcast, but I know you guys at home want to celebrate the New Year. So um, we're going to pause it here and we'll continue on probably in 2017 where we can sweep our list under the rug ASAP because um, on my list, I have Rogue One, a Star Wars story. So yay, probably by that time everybody watched it. I hope. You don't want to force the issue? Uh, you know what happens if you force it, right? The dark side comes out and you have to give cookies away. So, no. Uh, not the cookies. <laughs> no. Max, I am your father. <laughs> no. uh, I am your father's uncle's cousin's son's second roommate. What does that mean? No. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Oh, no. But anywho, uh, we'll continue on with this movie discussion for... 2017. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecile Vecquil. I have been Sapphire Heart Song. And we'll bid you a goodbye, a tour, uh, whatever you say. Keep on watching good movies. See ya. Good riddance, 2016. So long, farewell, la fides, and good night. Uh, have a happy new year and see you next year. Oh, wow. I wonder what next year's movie going to be. Yay! Uh, well, I don't know. I'm I'm scared. <laughs> Hold me, Silver. I wish I could, but there's a microphone and internet and continent in the way. Yeah.